we are the last line of defense. Miami-Dade's special response team are gearing up to launch a wave of lightning raids on suspected drug dealers across some of South Florida's most notorious neighborhoods. <laughs> the raids will be the culmination of months of planning by fellow officers in the narcotics unit. They will test SRT's physical and mental capabilities and utilize all their tactical skills. Search warrant blitz is going to be uh, my squad and uh, North and South End narcotics. Narcotics officers will follow SRT to the suspect's addresses, but the special response team will take the lead as these will be high-risk operations. Because as Lieutenant Calvin James explains, in Miami, where there are drugs, there are guns. They're armed because of uh, their business, you know? I mean, uh, they know that they have to protect themselves from the other bad guys, the other drug dealers. They're not friends. They are setting up individual businesses in certain areas. Some of these guys even mark off their territories, and, and they, they feel they have to protect them. Everybody here, everybody ready? To arrive at the premises to be searched, one will travel westbound on Northwest Opalaka Boulevard. Sergeant Bert Perez is briefing SRT for the first in their series of lightning raids. This warrant will hit a house belonging to a suspected cocaine dealer in the infamous Opalaka area of North Miami-Dade. The premises to be searched is located within a multi-family two-story structure, which is the third structure east of the previously mentioned roadway. Intelligence gathered on the suspect indicates he is highly dangerous and is thought to be heavily armed. Hispanic male, information that's supposed to be five assault weapons inside. In the event that we, once we go inside, we encounter gunfire, we'll go ahead and do what we have to do, all right? Melvin Gonzalez will be first through the door. He is all too aware what might lie in wait for him and his team. You're mindful that these that these folks might have assault weapons, so you, you prepare yourself for a gun battle of that nature. But every time we go into a house, we never put anything less, we never put anything more. They're all high high risk search warrants. So we go in with this as far as encountering the, the animal, we expect the biggest, baddest animal every single time. That way we don't get caught off guard. As the unit approach the target's address, the adrenaline starts to kick in. My favorite part of an operation is that final 10 seconds upon approach, right right before we make our final assault. Right now, this is what, this is what we do the job for, these few minutes, not knowing what's waiting for us on the other side of that door. All right, let's go to work. With the very real danger of armed resistance, the element of surprise is critical. Pull, pull, pull. All right, let's go. Reach up, let's go. Police suck run! Police suck run! Straight up, straight up. Police suck run! Police suck Nobody here, huh? Nope. Closet, closet, get that closet for me. After a search of the building, SRT are certain the suspect isn't home. All right, we executed the search warrant. Uh, no suspect inside, uh, but it wasn't a waste of day because there was a large amount of cocaine that was seized inside. As SRT head back to base, Melvin Gonzalez reflects on the raid. It pretty much went to plan how we expected it to go. Everything was executed perfectly. My understanding is they took uh, three quarters of a kilo of cocaine off the streets. So that's definitely a plus. We were definitely disappointed because we don't have any bodies to go along with what we recovered. We were expecting they'd have some subjects in there that, uh, that were wanted for several crimes with AK-47s. It's become the weapon of choice for killers across the world. They're also a police officer's nightmare and pretty easy to get. The 
This is an AK-47 assault rifle. This is a weapon of war, and it's commonly being used by criminals in Miami. This is the round that it fires. It's an extremely hard-hitting round, and unfortunately, too many police officers have been on the receiving end of this. But the AK-47 is not the only weapon SRT face on the street, as Sergeant Manny Malgore explains. This is more an exotic weapon, very commonly seen in the 80s with drug dealers. This is a 41 Magnum. What concerns us about this weapon is it's a very powerful handgun. This is a 12 gauge shotgun. This is one of the preferred weapons used by drug dealers because you don't have to be incredibly accurate. As long as it's pointed in the right direction, this is a very devastating weapon. This is a 9 millimeter subgun. What's dangerous about this weapon is its compact size. It's very easy to conceal, and at the same time, it's fully automatic. SRT's drug blitz has got off to a good start, taking almost a kilo of cocaine off the streets in their last raid. All right, guys. Hey, gather around. But it's just the beginning of a series of operations across the county that will take the fight to Miami-Dade's drug dealers. With its golden beaches and legendary nightclubs, Miami is one of the world's top holiday destinations. But over on the other side of town, away from the glamour of South Beach, the special response team have joined forces with narcotics detectives and begun a major drug sweep against suspected dealers. SRT have already seized almost a kilo of cocaine in a single raid. It's a small but important victory for a city with a troubled drug history. In the early 1980s, cocaine from South America was flooding into the city. The cocaine, which federal authorities say has a street value in excess of $1 billion, was discovered in a shipment of clothing, which arrived aboard the plane from Colombia. Miami had become America's number one gateway for traffickers, and billions of dollars worth of drugs poured through the city and into the rest of America. They discovered some 22 boxes containing cocaine, and it was not even camouflaged in any way. As soon as they opened up the boxes, it was there. With the drugs came huge amounts of cash, gangsters, and a terrifying wave of murders. Miami was desperate for a solution. To take on the criminals, an elite police unit was formed. In 1985, this unit became known as the Special Response Team. SRT have been on the front line of the war against drugs ever since. For the series of county-wide drug raids, SRT have established a base in a police station car park. Unit Commander Lieutenant Calvin James outlines the strategy. We're concentrating on a very small area of the county, uh, a high crime area. The idea is kind of like, um, you know, shock and awe. What I'm hoping for is that we have a, a successful operation, one, that none of my guys get injured, Two, none of the bad guys get injured. Uh, three, we're all able to go home safe and sound. SRT lock and load in preparation for their next warrant. We're going to be executing a narcotic search warrant, and it's going to be a second structure north of 151 Street. There's a As leader for the next raid, Sergeant Manny Malgore puts SRT in the picture. Entry team is Melvin on the shield, Cruz one, Flacco two, Madrugas three, Myself, Larry, and Ray on the tools. It's a very busy spot on the drive-by. Uh, there was cars waiting in line, all right, to serve. There's also uh, lookouts. The main lookout that I saw was a heavy set black male wearing a white white uh, t-shirt. Anybody have any questions? Anything? All right, let's do it. If you look at the county as a whole, uh, the kind of crimes that are occurring, you can almost without doubt track them back to narcotics in some way, shape, or form. 
and crime is never going to go away. The only thing we can do is try and stay ahead of the curve. Our job is not to judge. Our job is to, to take subjects into custody, turn them over to detectives so they can follow through with uh, further investigation. As SRT close in on their target, they switch to their armored vehicle known as the Bearcat. Once inside, Larry Alleman reflects on the positive side of his work. You feel like what you're doing is worthwhile. You're doing something good today. And uh, yeah, in, in a sense, it makes you feel alive, but it just makes you feel, it empowers you. No. no guns, nothing. Once SRT have secured the suspects, the narcotics unit search the house and find marijuana, crack, and a large quantity of prescription drugs. Two of the occupants were later charged with drug offenses, one for possession and the other for sale of cocaine. For Melvin, the presence of children leads him to reflect on his own family situation. This alleged suspected a home where they're selling drugs out of and there's a, there's a couple of small children in there and it makes me sad because uh, I, I, have, I have a year and a half old myself and uh, I look at, at how these kids are, are forced and I say forced because they have no choice in the matter how they're forced to live and, and the, the constant danger that they're around uh, from, from any type of residual violence that can occur here. It's a shame. They don't care enough about their kids. The subjects don't care enough about their kids to, you know, to protect them from that kind of environment. They actually put them in that environment, put them in that predicament. And I feel sorry for these guys, for these kids. A lot of times they don't have, they don't learn anything else. They don't know anything else. And it's just, a, it's just a cycle, you know. That's what this is what they learn. I try not, not to dwell on that. I got a job I got to do, uh, and that's what I do. I do my, my job, and I think about that afterwards, you know. Working together in life-threatening situations every day has made SRT a tight-knit group. I would consider the unit to be a band of brothers. You know, this is one of the uh, unique units on the, the, the department where guys actually work together as a team. And I think that's the difference, uh, that, that the tightness, the brotherhood that's developed here uh, comes from that. And we have that hard love. And that's, that's that serious love. When you have hard love for each other, because these guys are hard guys, that's how they express their love. Every now and then, they get a little sentimental. Well, we get a, we get a little nervous with that, but we're good. We're, we're like family, and it's good times <laughs> along with the hard times. We spend a lot of time together, uh, both on and off duty. Uh, sometimes we work, you know, very long days, eight, ten, twelve hours a day. I consider them all my second family, if not my primary family. I probably spend the majority of my time with them, which of course is unfortunate for my real family, my son and my wife at home. Um, but I depend on them every day. I depend on them, I put my life in their hands, so yeah, definitely, I consider them family. <laughs> and they feed me. After a well-earned break, it's back to the serious business of the drug blitz. Lieutenant Calvin James sets off to gather last-minute intelligence for SRT's next warrant. It's the crucial final stage before SRT come knocking. If we didn't get that intelligence, we'd hit a house and you wouldn't have any idea who you were going up against, if there are firearms involved, if there's dogs involved, uh, if there's kids present. Um, we wouldn't have any of that information. So it gives us a better chance of ensuring that we have a, a more successful operation. Once at the target address, Lieutenant James keeps a low profile. Yeah, that's it. Well, you got to watch your back. You don't want people walking up on you. Obviously, you know, I'm preoccupied with looking at a structure and looking at paperwork. So, yeah, it's dangerous. But to me, I think the dangerous, the most dangerous part of the operations that we do is going through the door. 
Lieutenant James drives round to scope the house's front entrance. Unless those are uh, occupants of the house, um, I would say business is uh, pretty good right now. It seems to be pretty busy. Calvin James is an experienced officer who grew up in Liberty City, one of Miami-Dade's toughest districts. When you look back at just my high school alone, because those are the kids that I knew, it was funny because it seemed, when you looked at it, either we went into law enforcement or became bad guys. For me, you know, it goes back to the way you're brought up and the choices you make uh, when you become responsible for yourself. I can sit back on the sidelines and it that wouldn't necessarily make me a part of the problem, but it wouldn't make me a part of the solution either. Back at the staging area, narcotics officers and SRT are standing by for instructions for their next raid. Gun enthusiast officer Phil Frazin makes sure he is well prepared with his favorite weapon, the shotgun. Uh, we encounter a lot of pit bulls, big heavy dogs, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes we got to shoot them, and this will do the job. Uh, takes a little get used to. It's got a big kick, and uh, but probably the best uh, best uh, stopper we have. Not us. But the thing is, what I the address for the next raid is well known to both SRT and their fellow officers of the narcotics unit. Well, uh, we've hit this house several times before. We've been surveilling it lately. There's a lot of activity, so hopefully it's going to be a good search warrant. Should be a, a nice amount of drugs in there, and we do have information from um, from confidential informants that they have seen them in there with AK-47s. All right, guys. Hey, gather around. As team leader for this raid, Sergeant George Herrera briefs his men on the plan of attack. It looked like there's a small indentation here, Ray. I don't know if there's a door or not. And I couldn't see, like I said, if there's anything else. You identify a second entry point, let me know. LT? Now back at base, yes, Lieutenant James contact. shares the intelligence gleaned from his drive-by. The subjects walk up to the first window just west of the entry door. They knock on that window, and then they walk around to side four to do the deal. All right? So be cautious of that. Entry team's going to be Kenny on the shield, Troy 1, Roman 2, O'Connor 3, myself. Jerry Gonzalez, 22 Avenue and 62 Street. We're going to make the swap. We'll go from the truck to the Bearcat. Any questions? All right. We're good. Let's go, guys. As SRT roll out, followed by narcotics detectives, Lieutenant James explains what his men are thinking at times like this. Right now, hopefully what's going through their mind is they're thinking about their, their individual responsibilities. Uh, their assignments that they've been given by the team leader and the timing of the operation. Phil Frazin has been assigned driving duty for this warrant, though he'd rather be leading the charge. This job driving a truck right now, uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta uh, do the boring stuff sometimes, but every part's crucial though. I just like doing a little more action than just driving the truck. Every operation utilizes the Bearcat, an armored vehicle that leads the approach to the target location. The Bearcat, uh, above all, it, it provides us with a, a good platform. It gives pretty much everybody a, a better vantage point far ahead. We could see subjects, we could see vehicles, we could see anything of particular importance. We have to be prepared for anything at any time. Always expect the unexpected, because you never know what you're going into. Bear's definitely my friend. So it keeps me sharp, it keeps me training. It keeps me uh, never letting my guard down. It makes me feel I'm alive. Approximately 10 seconds out of the structure now. Should be up to our right side.
step back. Pull, 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 pull. Police start toward! We're good, we're good. Start toward! I'm with Kenny. Clear the rear, we got it. Hold. Small dog, small dog. Listen, I can see it. Two and two, two and two. No, we got one room. Start toward down the ground! Get down, down the ground! On the ground! Small dog! Baby dog, baby dog. Hands behind your back. Hands behind your back. Keep it going, guys. Small dog, small dog. As most of the team clear the property room by room, a suspect is apprehended outside. And it's not long before two more men are led out of the house. Good job. Got a couple subjects here, a couple three subjects uh, inside the house. Good to go. SRT often encounter attack dogs during raids. Pit bulls can be a real problem, but not this time. Those are pups. They look pretty friendly. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm happy about that. And actually, if you look at them, they're, they're beautiful dogs. So, um, you know, it's never good when you, you run into dogs like that that are aggressive and uh, you have to defend yourself against them. But thankfully, I'm glad these aren't. That's what you call puppy love. With SRT's job complete, narcotics detectives can move in, including undercover officers wearing masks to conceal their identity. So far, I'm very happy. The warrant was successful. We hit the right house. Right now, we're getting ready to do a supervisory walkthrough so we can determine what type of narcotics are inside the house and see how successful the warrant was overall. It seemed like when we approached, there was a guy at the window buying, so it's always a good sign. As well as a haul of marijuana worth thousands of dollars on the street, a search also unearths 20 high-strength light bulbs, the type used for an illegal growing operation. One individual was later charged with renting the property for the purpose of trafficking and the manufacture of marijuana. It appears the house has been dedicated to drug dealing. No furniture. We'll usually put uh, one out of business and then due to the fact of the location and the, uh, the fact that it is a rental property, uh, another group of uh, dope sellers will usually move in and uh, time and time again we'll usually go to the same structure and we'll keep arresting different uh, groups of narcotics sales. Much to SRT's relief, the suspected AK-47s didn't materialize. That's the best feeling in the world. We were able to do this safely. Nobody got hurt. None of, none of our guys got hurt, so it's a, it's a perfect day for me. Miami is a picture postcard holiday destination, boasting some of America's finest beaches. But in another part of Miami-Dade County, SRT are taking a break before the next warrant in their drug blitz. Hey, look, I do this to my son and he goes to sleep. I just tickle his little tummy like this. <laughs> Narcotics detectives are processing the growing number of suspects and counting up drug seizures. Sergeant Tony Linares from the Narcotics Unit is going over the take from the most recent raid. This is all marijuana. They're already packaged individually, for, ready to sell. All right, well, we have two different types here. The small bags with a little bit of marijuana in it are $5. And then you can see that these bags are filled a lot more. These are $10. And in total, we're looking at about a $4,000 street value right here. There are more arrests for possession of marijuana in America than any other drug. Although law enforcement officers destroy roughly 7 million plants every year, Selling marijuana remains a lucrative, illegal business. We're probably looking at about 10 grand a week, easy. It's very busy. Uh, they got a lot of traffic. This was probably just getting ready for the weekend. A crucial role in the drug blitz is being played by undercover officers. We're passing by the house now. There's a guy wearing like an olive color shirt. Is that you right there? Yeah. An undercover officer, or UC as they're known, is about to carry out a test drug buy from a suspected dealer narcotics detectives want to take down. OK, I got the UC traveling eastbound on, on 8th Street. Staking out the location, Lieutenant Ricky Carter watches his UC's back. 
Okay, right now we have the UC. He just exited the vehicle and he's gonna attempt to purchase narcotics from the house. Each day we go out here with a mission that, you know, we're gonna do our part. Usually the type of person that comes, uh, or the couple officers, somebody that has a lot of street savvy, somebody that's, you know, stay up to date on the terminology that, that's used on the street. It's a nerve wracking job. And if the UC's cover is blown, it will put both the undercover officer and the operation in danger. I'm gonna make sure that uh, the UC is safe, make sure that he makes it out alive, and also make sure that, he, that, that the buy is successful. You gotta have good nerves and be able to maintain a, a, a level head, because if not, you, you'll get, you get uh, picked out real soon. Okay, he's walking away from the residence now. You need to have a level of fear and know that Keep you, keep you up on your game, keep you aware of your surroundings and what's going on at all times. And you gotta know that any time, at any moment, something can go wrong. Right, they got a visual on the UC walking back towards the uh, vehicle. Kizzo. So now the UC just left the location. He's walking back to a predetermined meeting place. So right now our main priorities are to make sure that the undercover officers are being followed out of the location by someone attempting to jack him or rip him or rob him of the dope and or money that he may have. The drug buy has been a success. Now narcotics officers have the evidence they need to obtain a search warrant and carry out a raid in the coming days. All right, uh, you see him across. Uh, with the... I want to meet back at the station. Kids, I'm pulling out now. Undercover drug buys from a trailer home in the Hialeah area of Miami-Dade have given the police the evidence they need to pay the suspect an official visit. Yeah, but this, this is the real deal now. He's nervous, but look at him. <laughs> SRT and the narcotics officers stand by to be briefed by their team leaders. All right, here we go. The entry door of the premises to be searched is the first door west of the easternmost wall on the north side of the trailer. The subject description is a uh, Hispanic male, I would say about 45 to 55 years of age, with gray hair. This is trailer two, this is our target, trailer two. Number 89, surrounded by a uh, chain link fence about five to six feet. The front door is always open. When we did the drive by just now, it's uh, two little kids in the front yard. All right, if we got the little girls playing around here, do me a fair, go ahead and get them out of here, and then we'll secure the uh, the father is a his, Hispanic male in his 40s selling crack cocaine. Selling crack cocaine. Easy day, let's do it. Sergeant Dennis Alvarez will lead the team of narcotics officers to the suspect's address. Well, a couple of times we watched him, uh, he had uh, he had a lot of foot traffic and a lot of car traffic going in, so I would venture to say he's probably doing two to $300 a day worth of uh, crack sales. We know he has uh, two kids that live with him, so hopefully uh, he won't try and go for a farm. We don't, we don't have any intelligence that says he is or he's not, so we usually don't take any chances anyway. Multiple subjects outside, multiple subjects outside. On arrival at the trailer park, SRT take the lead. We got somebody coming out. Coming. No, 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 no. Listen to me. Go stand over there. Get back. Well, SRT uh, just conducted the search warrant, and they're releasing the house now to us. Now that the house is made safe by all of them, we'll do a, a walkthrough. We'll put the dog in there, see the dog alerts or anything, and then we'll do an actual physical search, a hand search, and hopefully we'll find where he's hiding his narcotics. He's telling uh, the SRT guys that he doesn't have that he has a crack problem, but he doesn't have any crack on him and that he's drunk. 
we'll find that out sooner or later. <laughs> That's a uh, crack cocaine. The initial SRT search soon makes a discovery. Street value is probably about $70, $80. Cocaine comes in a powder phone. They cut it with uh, baking soda, put a little water in it, usually stick it in the microwave in a beaker. It'll get heated up and it'll evaporate the water and it'll leave one hard, what they call a cookie, on the bottom. That's why they call it a crack cookie. And what they do is they'll cut it into little pieces. If you get an ounce of, of powder cocaine, you could probably get almost three ounces of crack. So it's going to be a lot more profitable than selling the ounce. We got word that our canine found another bomb. A bomb is what we consider a uh, stash. There's it. That's the rest of his stash. There's got to be, I would venture to say, at least 100, 150 rocks in there. That's probably about four or $500 more of his crack cocaine. So he's going to be hurting for a while, hopefully. Get all this crack off the street and put this guy behind bars where he belongs. If he starts back up again, we'll be back again. The trailer park suspect has been charged with possession with intent to sell drugs. When police seize drugs in a raid, they're brought to the Miami-Dade crime lab, where they're tested for purity. The case against the suspect will be affected by what it is they're alleged to be selling. They're small zip-up bags of crack cocaine, and this is how we typically see crack cocaine coming into the lab. We analyze the substance to exactly determine what they are so that the state attorney's office can proceed with their case. A staggering 70,000 kilos of cocaine are seized by law enforcement agencies in America every year. This is typical of what we receive. A kilo of suspect cocaine will cut into it, use a scalpel, we'll cut into the package. This kilo looks like it had been sampled uh, because it's very firm at this point here, but this area here is got some looseness to it. So what may have happened is someone had cut into it, sampled the kilo. This could have been between uh, two people transaction of narcotics, where one's buying and one's selling narcotics, and they open it up. They see the nice white flaky uh, powder, which is an indication that this is very good cocaine. Maybe 90% of the drugs that we get here is powder cocaine or crack cocaine. I'm going to check for microcrystals. It's positive for cocaine. Microcrystalline tests are positive. We see a lot of uh, marijuana or cannabis. Uh, what we're seeing more of uh, lately is uh, hydroponic uh, or marijuana that's grown inside homes. We also see uh, heroin, uh, MDMA, or ecstasy. Uh, we see quite a bit of that. The job here in the Miami-Dade Police Crime Lab is very important in the sense that there is a relationship between drugs and violent crime, and it's very important that uh, we get those people off the street to make this a safer city. As the countywide drug blitz continues, SRT and the Narcotics Unit are en route to carry out a warrant on a suspected drug dealer they believe may be armed. I was advised by the team leader, Sergeant Perez, that approximately a year, year and a half ago, he executed a search warrant there, and they actually find, found a uh, nine millimeter handgun on the one of the subjects that was at this residence. There's always the, the potential that, you know, when you're executing narcotic search warrants, that you're gonna run into firearms, and that's why we do them. Go, 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 go. Reach up, reach up. Look out, look out, look out. Shield, shield up, shield up, get up, get up. Get up. Police search warrant! Police search warrant! After a search, it's clear the suspect is not inside the house. The only occupants are some shocked women and children. Bring it back, bring Let's go ahead and get that baby out of here before we start a secondary. Once outside, 
It seems all is not well with one of the young women. Okay. Are you breathing okay? You all right? Just calm yes. down. You're fine. Relax. Breathe. Okay? We're the police. You're fine. All right? Breathe. Just relax and breathe. You're fine. All right? You look too young to be involved in anything going on here anyway, so just relax. You're going to be fine. You okay? Huh? Yeah. Okay, relax. You sure? Because you're shaking. I got fire rescue right here. I can walk you right back there and let them check you out, okay? You want to go back there real quick so you can relax? She's got uh, chronic asthma, and she looked to be, uh, you know, experiencing um, a lot of uh, anxiety, and I didn't want to us to be the reason that an, uh, an attack, you know, is brought on. So, you know, when you talk about, you know, narcotics or drugs being a victimless crime, when you see the infant over there and when you see a 16-year-old like this, those are the real victims. They have no clue what's going on here. Yet when we show up, we have to treat people a certain way for our safety and for theirs, and this is what happens, you know? So those are your real victims. The suspect has evaded SRT for now. Sometimes a raid will leave police empty-handed, but Lieutenant James remains optimistic. The guys that do dirty, they get lucky, and it's usually the innocent uh, family members that are left home when we show up. But, you know, their time will come. Narcotics knows who they're looking for, and, uh, you know, if they don't get them today, they, they usually go and they put a, a, uh, an arrest warrant in the system for them, and they're eventually picked up. SRT's raids have resulted in numerous arrests, seizures of cocaine, crack, marijuana, and thousands of dollars in cash. But for Lieutenant James, it's the safety of his men that pleases him most. No injuries to my guys, no injuries to the bad guys, no injuries to the dogs. I'm glad it's over. Who knows, that might have been a couple of lives that we might have saved tonight. Somebody might not OD tonight. Somebody might not get murdered over drugs tonight or money tonight. Police the drug blitz has been a success, but SRT are needed by the gang unit for a dangerous dawn raid. It will draw on all their skills and be a stark reminder of why the special response team are a critical part of the county's police department. With sunshine all year round, Miami is a mecca for holidaymakers. But like every major city, it also has its fair share of crime. After a successful series of drug raids, Miami-Dade's special response team has been called in by the gang unit to launch a dawn raid at the home of a suspected drug dealer. The suspect is well known to SRT and has a previous arrest for murder. The structure is the third structure north of Northwest 170 Street. He's also a member of the Behind the Plaza Boys, a notorious gang that team leader Sergeant Bert Perez has encountered before. About three years ago, same situation I was involved in. I had one of my officers get shot with the same scenario, gang member supposedly on with AK-47. So actually, boy, I want to hit this guy hard and fast and don't give him any time to think. We definitely go in with a mindset of invincibility, you know, tempered, tempered with uh, with knowledge and patience. So we're just not running in bli blindly and violently. Um, you know, we use our training and our tactics, but definitely in our minds, we're waiting for Godzilla on the other side of the door, and we're definitely prepared uh, prepared to deal with him. You could say we're the pack of wolves that are going to take down Godzilla. Once inside the building, the race is on to find the suspect before he can offer any resistance. Moments later, the suspect is apprehended and led outside in a daze. 
the the job could uh, the job went well. It, I don't think it could have gone any better. We uh, made entry. The entry was extraordinarily fast. It was textbook. If you had to make a training video out of chipping and and, uh, and opening a door, you definitely want to use that footage. Uh, I think he was overwhelmed really quick by the numbers uh, and the speed once we went inside. Caught him totally off guard. Can I grab the slides, please, officer? And talk to the detective. For a man with such a history, the suspect seems very polite. You know, I would hope that, that it definitely is an overwhelming uh, show of force that, that causes him to become uh, meek and, 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 and very, very uh, subdued, if you will. Um, it could be a game. It could be a game that he's playing for the detectives to not come across as the hardened criminal that his record shows he possibly is. Uh, but we like to think that we go in there with such force and with such a presence that that's what we want. We want, them, we want subjects to just mentally shut down and, and do nothing but comply. These bad guys subjects that prey on innocent victims when they see us come through that door their face some of them actually cry for their mommy that's my favorite part big guys like that go down crying for their mom with the suspect restrained by srt the gang unit can begin a search for weapons and drugs uh, most fun of the mill dope sellers or salespersons are just trying to make a couple extra dollars and they're doing it for economic reasons. Gang members are different. They use drugs as a means to facilitate the gang activities, be it purchase weapons, um, enforce their, their authority in the neighborhoods, um, terrorize citizens. They're more prone to use violence against any person and particularly against the police. So that's why when we have warrants that are dealing with gang members and dealing with narcotics, we use a special response team because they're the professionals at this and that's what we want them to do. SRT's job is done. An extensive search of the building initially unearths a stash of cash, followed by a significant quantity of cocaine and crack. And finally, detectives find a frightening array of guns and ammunition, including a 44 Magnum and an AK-47 assault rifle, an extremely deadly weapon of war. The suspect was later charged with armed drug trafficking and possession of cocaine with intent to sell. Every year, three quarters of SRT's raids are drug warrants. It puts them on the front line in the fight against the drug trade. Lieutenant Calvin James doesn't see that about to change. I've never heard of a shortage of uh, crack, there being a shortage of cocaine, there being a shortage of marijuana or pills or anything that they want on the street. So that leads me to think that, you know, the supply is pretty good and, and they're getting in what they want to get in. But because our narcotics guys are going out, they're finding these places where the cells are being made from, they're getting search warrants. Yeah, all I can say is there's no shortage of business for us. We're constantly working.